what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live! I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you're new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly if you'd like to join the discussion simply mute the page you are currently watching then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you're watching this on the premiering stream, then subscribe to my second channel if you did want to watch these shows on a Friday live. Now we are joined by... Chocolate Sane and Tenth Man in G+, together with a whole bunch of people in Discord, so welcome one and all. Good morning. Yo, yo, yo. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Any signs of a physical geometric earth curve edge? <laughs> Are we gonna get off? <laughs> Should we get off on a tangent? What, a bent tangent? Can't be doing geometry with no bent tangent lines. Any signs at all of any earth curvature? Not from El Prado Golf Course. Not not from across the street to that golf course. Because <laughs> that's a very specific ge <laughs> geographic location. <laughs> any signs of axial rotation? Not of the earth-based variety. Discord? Any arguments recently about Earth spinning? Is everyone mute? Oh, no, not everyone's off mute. Hardly anyone's off mute. Ah, oh, do it all myself. <laughs> right, I've taken half of you off mute. Anybody in Discord have any evidence of axial rotation? Only on my truck, because I'm at work. Of the earth based variety. <laughs> no. No, there's none to be found. Fair enough. Any scientific evidence of gravity? Which type? Any scientific evidence of gravity? No. Nope. Any single viable hypothesis from any of the fields of astronomy, cosmology, or astrophysics? No, no, haven't heard Still from Dr. Waiting. Becky. Go on, Discord server. Uh, still no. waiting. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? It's over there. Wait, where's Arwin? Up there. Yeah, I was covering for Arwin. Any evidence of a self-perpetuating molten iron core at the centre of a presupposed spherical Earth? No, no evidence, Nathan. Just another story. Yep, nothing. What about any evidence of gas pressure capable of existence without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon? Um, I have a flat tire I gotta get into a fix so the opposite of that the look outside <laughs> yeah it's an antecedent consequent relationship so that would be an argument that could mm, you'd, you could be hypercritical and say it's a bit bit far fetched but nevertheless it would be an argument for our side given that there is an antecedent consequent relationship with gas pressure and containment Without the container, there can be no pressure. Then going outside, experiencing gas pressure, 
would be confirmation that there must be containment, because the containment is the antecedent to have gas pressure. Yeah, so like my yeah. flat tire that can't yeah. hold That's pressure right now. It's always been a little weird to me. Go outside as proof of a vacuum in the sky when we go outside and I'm still breathing outside. That's gas pressure. That's not vacuum. <laughs> so how is it going outside as proof of vacuum? It's not. It's proof that huh? we must have containment for the atmospheric pressure that we experience. Without the container, there can be no pressure, to quote conspiracy cats. But then uh, they say, where's the barrier, right? Who cares? Antecedent That's consequent right. relationship. Yeah. There must be one, because without the container, there can be no pressure. So, do I know what the sky mm. is? No, I make no claims about knowing what the sky is, but I definitely experience gas pressure. So, your original assertion, which is to parody a globe head assertion, will just go outside. We've still got gas pressure, therefore the sky must be a vacuum, would be the argument that you're parodying. But ultimately speaking, the antecedent consequent relationship to have gas pressure in the first instance is one of containment. So, in other words, what I'm saying is that could argued, that could arguably be our position. We could say, well, just go outside. You experience gas pressure. Therefore, it must be pressing on something. But they use the argument. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. ludicrous. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, they, yeah. they may... They're gone. All right, well, then how come they got spacesuits and uh, spaceships that have to contain their own oxygen in the medium that doesn't exist? Yeah, so to expand on that, what you... Expand, boom, boom. To expand on that, you're saying if a, if a spaceship needs containment to maintain a decent level of atmospheric pressure or equivalent inside the vessel for the man inside to be claimed to be breathing, then why would it be the case that the vessel requires containment to maintain the gas pressure, but Earth does not? Well, it's a con it's yeah. a complete contradiction in terms. If the man inside the vessel that's a that's escaping Earth's atmosphere requires containment to keep his pressure, well, then so does Earth. And it's a consequent of having a container. The gas pressure wouldn't exist if we didn't have something to contain it. Now, do I know what's containing it? No, I don't know what the sky is. And we're lied to in droves about what the sky actually is. Claimed to be a violation of the second law of thermodynamics in the form of a sky vacuum called outer space. Hello, Arwen. Hello. Any evidence of the R value, Earth radius? Hmm. There is now evidence of an R win. <laughs> Good one. Chocolate, you're taking risk. Can't argue with that. <laughs> Can't argue. Love it. I think that concludes the housekeeping. That's a good reply. I didn't catch that. I'm sure it was a pun. <laughs> Everything's with R. You can't even say anything without R when R comes in. Okay, That's right. everything you have to say with an R. There's a small army of concave winds in the chats of various different channels. There's the Dar win, and there's the Horizon <laughs> win, the Sip win. <laughs> <laughs> there's all these different winds. It's yeah. famous. Ar Arwen has his own elven army. Yeah, it's got his own little <laughs> army of trolls. Yeah. They're not affiliated with Arwen, just in case everyone gets that impression. Somebody actually trolling yes. him. A concave yes, called... Commander Arwen. It's a concaver called Jason McCormack. Shame it's all wine. Say again. Shame it's all wine. No wind, wine. Well, wine. The IJN is a, yeah, that's a type of uh, verb. There you go. That's Dutch. And it's really not very well known outside of the Netherlands. Are they so, saying you're of good vintage or wine? It's just the Dutch angle <laughs> of the word. It's not even win. It's it's more like no, vein. Look, it's more like vein. In that isn't context, it? in the Dutch context, it means yeah, wine of like a drink. Or vine. So, like the like yeah, grapevine. The vine. wine of the R. Yeah. Yeah. It's not win, it's it's more like wine or vine. No, but you can say win. Vine. Why? You can think of it no, as being No, 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 no. That's absolutely not how you pronounce that. And I refuse to accept that. I thought it was no, I... Harvain. A. That's... that's how you say it. A. 
A A A A A. But which yeah. bit? Uh, I win. No, no, not I. A. 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 Yeah, but which part of your name? <laughs> which part of your name has got that sound in it? Is it Just Vain? Just win. Ah, Vain. It's all. Ah, Vain. There you go. Almost there. Oh, yeah. It's just. It's but all you have to pronounce me. the A part more. Look, oh, screw you. My Dutch is better than yours. Serieus? <laughs> nah. Nee. Uh, Daar komt no. echt niks van in. Look, we won't have any of this foreign speak here. We're British. Urgh, bloody foreigners. <laughs> it's just making me feel ignorant, that's all. All right. Anyway, so can we can we talk about the Donkey Dick Horizon and its tangent line? Yes, Nathan, we can. It sounds really interesting. Oh, I'm so glad everyone's keen to talk about this. Me too. <laughs> the what? So where? It, cast your mind back, Arwen, to debating about the Isle of Man with geometry calculators on screen and straight lines for tangents being drawn to physical horizons that are obscuring things. Can you? I don't think we need to. Do we need to? Do we need a bit of strings? Do we need some? No, no. I remember this, that that was a very long phase. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, indeed you do. Now, the problem at the moment is that they're claiming that in order to have a geometric horizon which we never see, it's only applicable under special circumstances where we have no atmosphere and can draw straight lines. However, there's a glaring contradiction in this, which is to say that if they're claiming the light is bending. From the target to give you their standard refraction figures which are separate to the geometric figures then they can't draw straight lines they so can't have it both ways you can't have a straight line tangent being drawn to a physical obstruction but also simultaneously bend the light around for the observation to run through the maths so they've got a glaring contradiction once they apply refraction which has only been utilised to get around the fact that we've got zoom cameras and can see further and the standard geometry no longer cuts the mustard. But it ultimately killed the geometry because it no longer is geometry. Because where are you going to get a straight line from? If you're looking at refracted values, you can't draw any more straight lines. Now, we didn't well, appreciate that, this before now. But well, the funny thing is, in reality, that's why they fall back for the actual pragmatic side of doing things to a flat model. <laughs> Admittedly, even NASA does that and aero, yeah, you know oh, that, aero I see that mechanics a, and all that. I see that as a necessity of reality. If you want it to actually yeah. work, if you actually want to get some decent mathematics out of observation of refractive values, then you're going to need to do it over a flat plane because that's how things really work. When you assert that we need to do a thought experiment and assume we've got a geometric horizon that is never ever seen or capable of being seen, then we can bend light around a horizon that doesn't exist and claim it's a physical obstruction for things in the distance that we're measuring with a straight line tangent but bent light receiving at the camera end. So it's a, become a complete hodgepodge. Now, the thing that's highlighted this hodgepodge isn't necessarily the fact that we've appreciated the straight line tangents being bent. It's more the fact that in their geometry they've taken the bastardization too far. So it was already the case that they'd ruin the calculator by applying refraction to it because they can't draw straight, straight line tangent lines. So they'd already done it, but by moving the horizon also, the physical geometry the refractive values were based on, and that was what we were focused on. Well, they've hijacked perspective. That's where they're getting their refraction from. Missing the point that they need a straight line tangent in the first instance, which they haven't got as soon as they move on to the refracted values. So like I say, we didn't spot it before. But yesterday, I've trimmed it out. And it's the, the video that's most recent on my Nathan Oakley 1980 channel. is me saying exactly this. Hang on a second. Why were we arguing about how the straight line geometry affected the amount of hidden if everything's refracted? You can't draw straight line tangents to these images that are being compared inside elevation without perspective if you don't have a physical tangent line to draw because everything's in bent lines. Now, while we might have said that if we'd have recognised it back then, the thing that's made us recognise it is the the actual drawing of it. Um, let's see if I can dig it out from one of the Skype chats. So what I've been referring to is the donkey dick, uh, donkey dick tangent line. 
And what I mean by that is when they're giving you this representation and they're showing you a bent line for the line of vision and a dotted line to a place that isn't existing anymore as a physical geometric obstruction, they've <laughs> bastardized the model so badly that it becomes obvious that you can't have a bent line in a geometric calculation. So it isn't this that's broken the calculation. It just it just highlights how broken it was when they applied refractive values to geometry in the first place. And what's given us this highlighting, if you want to call it that, is this, what I'm now calling the donkey dick tangent line. This bent line that's sod all to do with geometry anymore. Their dotted line gives them geometry. And they haven't got one. Mm -hmm. So we can't do geometry anymore. This isn't geometry. It never was when we were looking at refractive values because geometry was no longer applicable. and got a straight line to do it with. So they'd already killed the calculator. And that's the same with any lie, any piece of bullshit. You have to lie on top of lie on top of lie on top of lie. And the more you do it, the more obvious the lie becomes. Well, this is just the, the next level of bullshit on an already broken calculator for a number of reasons. But it's the straw that breaks the camel's back in terms of making it so glaringly obvious that they can't perform geometry anymore. It's gone beyond that. And this is the thing that shows you this bent line. Anyway, that was my topic for the day. Yeah, I think the, the loss of their geometric horizon, the loss of the physicality, the actual geometry that their model requires, I think it's... It, it, I don't even think they understand yet how detrimental it is, how devastating it is. Because, I mean, just relinquishing the physicality of the geometric horizon, I mean, how many arguments does that just, uh, how many arguments on the ball side does that just negate? All of them. Throw, throw in the toilet, like all automatically. Of them. All of them. I was thinking about this in the <laughs> shower today. All of them. So I was thinking just because it was on screen at the time, we had the Isle of Man model up, and I'm like, What's the whole point of that argument then? It was all for nothing. It was totally irrelevant. We weren't doing geometry at any stage. If I asked them to go back now with this donkey dick horizon idea of where the horizon's situated because it's being refracted and we never see a geometric horizon, then we've never had a geometric obstruction with a straight line being drawn for a tangent. So none of the arguments make sense anymore, Chocolate. They're all down the crapper from this point. I, I got a good one for you. It's the foundation of the ball. I got yeah, a good one for yeah, you. It's not the straw on, that Arwin. broke the hold camel's on, back. Hold on, Arwin. Hold on, hold on. Whoever said that, just say it again, please. It's the foundation of the ball. Exactly. They're arguing it's for physical the geometry back. and sphereness for the place we live. And they're saying, we haven't got physical geometry. We don't have a observable geometric horizon. Like, that's where you die. That's the end of the argument. That's what you're arguing for. It's the basis of your religion. Sorry, go ahead, yeah. Arwen. Dude, yeah, it's it's not the straw that broke the one. Are you named Sorry, Arwen? Relax, <laughs> it's not buddy, the... relax. <laughs> it's not the straw that broke the camel's back. No, it's the straw man that broke the donkey's dick. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, like I say, the, the the idea of being able to do geometry with bent lines on the calculator on Metabunk, where it's got one right below the other, that was already a bunk idea. We just didn't recognise it till now. But you know, as soon as you actually start showing us a bent line, you go, "Hang on a second, this isn't geometry. <laughs> what the hell is this? Complete abortion. <laughs> That's not your model." That's not geometry. That's not a physical edge. <laughs> What's this now? Yeah, yeah, you keep fighting for us being able to loom something that's supposed to be physical and geometric. Because every time you do, it kills your model. Yeah. Okay, I actually I stole the like joke from S. Geometric Horizon. Say again, chocolate? Yeah. No, I was just saying, I mean, keep saying things like we, we've never seen the geometric horizon. <laughs> because we have an atmosphere. I mean, <laughs> what? what? Oh, the Jedi but, mind trick. Yeah, that was part of the yeah, bit yeah, I trimmed yeah. out. You, we've never seen a geometric horizon. Oh, wow. Oh, we have never yeah, seen a geometric horizon. Oh, hang on a second. Hang on. 
What's that you say about the Isle of Man? Where's the beach? It's blocked behind Earth Curve. It's blocked behind the physicality of the geometric horizon, but we're going to calculate how many feet and inches are missing behind the geometric physicality of a horizon. Your hand wave's not going to work, globe morons. We've never seen a geometric horizon, except on days when it seems like it's obscuring things. Then we're going to assert that something we never see is blocking things in the distance, and we're going to calculate the actual size of how much is being blocked. Just the mine experiment. And then we're going to say things like refraction allows us to see 10 times further than we normally would, while at the same time bending cranes. Yeah, refraction is great. <laughs> what a joke. Refraction is their, is their mathematical lawyer. It can bend anything in any way needed. Uh, it could, not anymore, because the lawyer had a giant R up its ass. <laughs> and that R, that they don't have that anymore. It it's gone. It gave them a geometric physical sphere edge for a horizon. Oh. That's what R gave them. It gave them past tense. It doesn't give them that anymore. They haven't got an R value. They haven't got a physical geometric horizon. And that's the basis of their religion. And all they can do now is say we don't have that. Like it's a defense. No, it's not. It's the concession we need to really rub it in your face that we don't live on a sphere model. What, what if you use the, the, the R value that you don't have really, right? And then change that R value to another R value. That, does, would that bring back the original R value that you didn't have in the first place? No, no take back. Could that help? You, gotta, you can't change oh, it. Man. You've only got one R value. It's assumed to begin with, but it's dictating that we stand on a physical rock based on that R value with physical obstructions based on that R value. So when they say, no, the obstruction that we see that's supposed to be physical based on our R value, we've assumed telling you it's a sphere, isn't applicable. We don't have a geometric horizon. So we've never seen one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then standard refraction should, should just be seven over six. With yeah, you no can't R. utilize the R anymore. <laughs> correct? They just—it's just a no, load of old nonsense. Shout out to Cleary. He says, "Where is the curve? Where's the curvature? Where?" Don't they have to use actual math to get the radius, Nathan? Yeah, they'd need to do straight line geometry. That's what they do okay. do. Do do. All right. So they use they use actual math to get the geometry for the radius. Then when it comes to explaining it, they're going to say it's arbitrary. Well, is the original math arbitrary? Yeah, completely made up. A mind game, an experiment that doesn't exist in reality, a thought experiment. Fallacy of misplaced concreteness, making something which is not concrete into something that is physical and actual, turning a model of a sphere, taking the idea that things in the distance don't change in their value, being called height. So a 10 foot wall is going to be a 10 foot wall at 10 miles, 20 miles, 100 miles, 1000 miles, doesn't matter what I draw inside elevation. I've got a side profile of something. Let's just put this picture back on screen. You've got your head side of it on the left-hand side of the observation and your target on the right-hand side of the observation. So in this particular depiction, the mathematics of geometry that make up your sphere religion, you are seeing the side of your own head. So that's the first problem. The second problem is this line, donkey dick tangent line that you now have, you can write whatever value you like on that line. So I can say H is a 10 foot wall and O is me. And I can say that this line represents a distance of 10 meters between me and it. Or I can say this line represents a thousand meters or a million kilometers. And this value at H for the 10 foot wall is still going to be 10 foot. That's where you fundy morons ask us 
why we can't see New York from England. Well, that's because you think a 10-foot wall is a 10-foot wall regardless of the distance. But there's a value you could attribute in reality to it. It's called, guess what? The apparent size. Now, what's that you say? You've heard this word apparent used quite a lot recently. Yeah, by Globeheads telling us about the apparent position of the apparent horizon. Redundant though it is. But their maths doesn't deal in apparent. And why doesn't it deal in apparent sizes? Well, because a 10-foot wall needs to be a 10-foot wall at any distance. So when it starts to disappear through angular size limitations, you can say it's Earth curve that's got in the way. What Earth curve's getting in the way? Well, the physical geometric Earth curve at G. Because that's your second horizon that we don't have. So, you've removed perspective from the maths, turned it side on so it doesn't represent anything like reality. I don't see my own head in this picture. It's not there. Just the observation. Just H. I don't see a dot for a horizon in two different locations, G and H. I see a horizon running the full length of the image. Not a pretend horizon for the maths. An actual horizon represented as a single dot. That's not what we see. This is nothing like reality at all. It doesn't have perspective, otherwise known as apparent sizes. For your apparent horizon? So this is bullshit. This isn't the world we live in. To look at this and in any way infer that this represents this is completely balmy. This doesn't represent this. It's nothing like it. You don't see the side of your own head. You don't represent things in the distance that have got very small as being the exact same feet and inches or meters value that they are when you're standing right next to them. The feet and inches value doesn't change with distance, but the angular, otherwise known as apparent, size does. Ignored to call Earth curve. That's all they've done. Hijack perspective. But now it's reached such a ludicrous stage where they're not even doing geometry anymore. What's this line got? Why is this dotted line dotted? That's giving you your geometry. Oh, because we don't see it. That's why we've got a dotted line for geometry instead of an actual line. So what we're doing, we're looking at stuff with a curved line and then doing straight line geometry. No, that's a total bastardization of geometry. So it's the end, Globeheads. There is no more geometry for you to assert. You don't have an R value to trust in. You certainly don't have a curved tangent line to apply to the observations where you put us inside elevation and show us with the side of our own head. So it's game over. You've got absolutely nothing to hang your sphere religion on anymore, Muppets. Wonderful. Have Brilliantly summarized. I sit back and wonder sometimes, right? I had, I remember I had this little back and forth with Zanuck one day about the horizon. And can, like, I even had this little joke of, can, can you get me an address to the horizon? Like, can I get a PO box? Like, can I get there? Is there a way I can get there? And he didn't fight me too much on it. Right, <laughs> because obviously at the time it was asserted to them that the horizon was physical, the geometric horizon. You know, it was physical. We see it, boats go over it. So that's why I was asking, you know, why can I get an address? Can I get there? You know, as I'm telling him at the same time, but you know, if I try to get there, quote unquote, the horizon is going to move because it's apparent, right? But at the time, he didn't say anything like that. Nobody said anything that it was apparent. It was still physical. He just didn't really want to uh, hold on. say, oh. Stop. All yeah, yeah, I, I get what you mean. Apparent, uh, yes. Let me just say it's it. It's always apparent. Yeah, let me I just get say it, it yes. then. Let me just say it. All horizons are apparent. The globe Earth yeah. horizon, right? So if we've got this semi-3D representation on screen now of a globe Earth, you know, it's almost comparable to what they show, but I've given it a bit of three-dimensionality when I asked the person to make this. So instead of it just being side-on, you've got this effective frame of the camera in terms of it showing you what you should see through the lens. But it's still kind of 3D eyes Muppet vision. So whereas in the, in the diagram, we're going to say, the geometric horizon's here. The horizon we see is here. When we put that into some sort of three-dimensionality on a ball, they're saying... What we see when we draw a tangent line from here to here 
is that this is the point that we're going to have a physical obstruction. That's going to be called the geometric horizon. But what we actually see, based on us drawing a physical line with a tangent to the obstruction, is going to be down here, because it's all bent light. So straight line is what we're going to use, but bent light. Remember that, okay? Bent line, bent, bent straight, bent straight. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What's with the shell game? Are we doing geometry or aren't we? Are we using a donkey dick line for what we actually have? Or are we performing actual geometry? No, we're not performing geometry. We're in Muppet vision. In the frame of your camera, these mountains, as they're supposed to be represented, would all get smaller as they go away from you. In this frame, this mountain here is going to be very, very small. This mountain here is going to be giant stonking enormous. It's right in front of you. Is that represented in this depiction? No, it doesn't have perspective. They're all the same bloody size. This is a hundred foot mountain. This is a hundred foot mountain. This is a hundred. So they're all the same size, are they? And uh, no, in reality, things get much smaller when they get further away. Like this oil platform is smaller than this one because it's a bit further away. But as soon as you turn it side on, they're all the same size, right? No, that's not how the world works. No, we don't see the side of our own head. We only see what's represented in this box. So this is a bastardization in and of itself, even if you just take the geometry as it should be done with straight lines. Because we don't experience the side of our own bloody head in an observation. We experience perspective. Things that have an actual size value in feet and inches or meters get smaller as they get further away. That's how the world presents itself to us. Not geometrically. Certainly not with a sphere edge representing things getting smaller into the distance. But you'll call it Earth Curve. According to the Earth Curve maths, this has dropped around Earth Curve. This one behind, oh, what's that you say? It hasn't dropped at all. It's still in front of the horizon. Yeah, that's why we've got a donkey dick for a tangent line now. Because apparently we're not drawing straight lines anymore, only under special circumstances where the sky vacuum has actually sucked out the air we're breathing. Not that we ever experienced the sky vacuum out of space sucking out the air for us to experience the geometric horizon. Because apparently if we suck all the air out, we'll see the side of our own head. No, we won't. We'll never see a geometric horizon. The thing doesn't exist. They all tell us how it doesn't exist. I'd like to uh, offer some cowbell for this. I just posted in Master B. So I don't see Righteous here. So Chocolate, can you put that up? The last one. On screen. All right. So you have it on screen, right? Fictitious Words. geography. Yeah. Okay, so this is from the Association of American Geographers. You would think people who know how to measure. So uh, this is saying fictitious geography. Now, can you measure fictitious geography? Just keep that in the back of your head. In science and also in mapping, we are concerned with nonfiction generally in our work. I agree. But all too often, we lose sight of the fact that much of our nonfiction is built upon abstraction and arbitrarily agreed upon convention, like p-values, for instance. With that in mind today, I will share some words from the glossary to help us remember that right there in our nonfiction research is our own fiction that we like to call abstraction and assumption. And then they go through these topics as you scroll down, Coriolis, uh, Equator fictitious, fictitious cartography, uh, all the way down to latitude fictitious, longitude fictitious, um, keep going, parallel fictitious, radius in brackets of the, not brackets, but parentheses, uh, of uh, earth effective fictitious, uh, interesting one there, by the way. And then let's just go down to the last summary statement, right below some fictitious mean. We should embrace the fiction in our science because understanding what we can measure and what we cannot is very important step to understanding the world around us scientifically. What? Ah, what we cannot measure. Hmm. What? That's all adorable. <laughs> How can geographers talk about measurement that can't be done and say it's true 
I mean, tough yeah. man. What what that sounded like to me was we have a lot of things in reality based on a lot of fiction. Yes. Is that, is that kind of a summary yes. of what you just said? Yes, that's what Nathan just described. And here's the cowbell <laughs> for it. Excellent. That was epic. Good timing, too. Yeah, and if you just go read the radius of the Earth's effective, I'll just read that one since that's the topic. A fictitious value of the Earth's radius, which when used in a formula for the distance from a point to the geometric horizon, gives the same answer as would using a true value of the radius in a formula for the distance to the apparent horizon. If the Earth were spherical and without air tangents drawn to the surface from a point above it, would define a circle, the geometric horizon outside of which no points on the sphere would be visible from the chosen point of all points inside it would be. If an atmosphere were added, points outside the circle would become visible because of the line of the site would curve and extend to points beyond the geometric horizon as far as a circle, the apparent horizon, of greater radius. The distance to the apparent horizon can be calculated using the same formula excuse me, as is used for the distance to the geometric horizon. Uh-oh, I like this one. In that formula, a larger value, the effective radius, is used for the radius of Earth. The effective radius for points of observation within the troposphere is greater than the true radius and increases with wavelength of the radiation at which the observations are made in particularly useful in determining without long calculation whether two points a considerable distance apart will be intervisible or able to receive each other's signals. For radio waves, the ultra-high frequencies, the effective radius is about four-thirds of a true radius. I, it's, it's hard to believe people could write such garbage. Well, it's in, it's in a a category describing um, abstractions, right? Well, <laughs> remember this quote? Math is reality. Red rhetoric. Math is an abstraction. Hey, Rogers. Yeah, well, if you're going to say fictitious, and this is, and they, and, and of course they did, so I guess they're okay because they're telling you it's not nonfiction, it's not true. I got a minor co correction for you, Nathan. Good. Uh, didn't you start out um, while Chocolate was speaking? You. Uh, you said all horizons are apparent. That's correct. That correct. That's correct. Wouldn't that imply that there are more than one horizon and we have only one that's apparent? No. Apparent is redundant. So the geometric horizon is apparent based on your height. So when you move your slider up and down in the earth curve reification model and your height changes, you can see further over the geometric obstruction. Well, that's apparent. Doesn't yeah, I change get that, but we oh, got only bad. one, correct? When you say all horizons, it would imply there are more than one. In reality, there is only one. Yeah. yeah, all horizons that you can see, which would be the one that we see, right? You could have a situation. We only see one. The one. only one. Hold on, let me just clarify this. You can why have a situation all with and why horizons? I can clarify it. I just need to get to the end of my statement. So you can have a situation where you've got a ball in front of you and you're looking out over an ocean where well, you'd have two horizons. A geometric horizon for the physical sphere you're holding and the horizon in the distance. Now, if you want to call one a geometric ball horizon and the other a vanishing point, you can if you like. But you still technically got two horizons in a picture if you've got a ball in your hand. The point is, all horizons are, by definition, apparent. A geometric ball Earth horizon is apparent based on height. So to say, well, we've got a geometric horizon, that would be the apparent position where the sky meets the ground. 
Well, that's still apparent by its definition. So to say we've got an apparent position where the sky meets the ground and an apparent horizon, well, that's completely redundant and makes no sense and non sequitur. We only have one horizon. Doesn't matter when we're talking about the horizon, whether it's geometric or not. By assertion, it's going to be apparent. So the reason they use the word apparent in that explanation itself is to give you two. One fictitious one that they're trying to qualify with this word salad that's just been read out by 10th man. And the other one, an apparent one. Well, the one they described in the first instance was apparent. So it doesn't suddenly give you two. But you can have a pluralization of horizon. I can easily create a situation with two of them in a picture. But all of them, both of them, in this instance, the horizon, vanishing point, if you will, and ball, both have an apparent horizon. But the word apparent horizon is redundant. They've both just got a horizon. Apparent's redundant. It's part of the definition of horizon. So it doesn't give you two. It doesn't give you an extra one. The one you started with, the geometric one's also apparent based on height. I hope that's clear. Right. And, and, and that brings me back to the point I was talking about before when I was having the back and forth with Zanuck, how we were talking about the horizon. Well, it, back then it was just the horizon. Now, that was pre-Black Swan. Post-Black Swan, all of a sudden now we're calling the horizon apparent. Like Nathan said, that's redundant because we've been saying for years, yes, it's an apparent position. It's in the definition of it, right? Now, all of a sudden, the ball side has to distinguish between a geometric horizon and apparent horizon. We got to talk about all these horizons now when we all know there's only one. So my question is, why wasn't it brought up before that there were all these horizons? There was actually a geometric horizon that we never saw. Why was that not thought out before the black swan was argued? Because it's That's devastating. Because it's the relinquishment of their religion to admit it. So instead of admitting it prior to the black swan, they had the Flat Earth Society punting a model asking us about our edge with boats going over it. Now, I don't hold up that bloody model. And I don't need to justify to twat commenters why boats go over the edge of a flat earth reification rising up at 9.8 meters per second per second in a sky vacuum a pizza pie with an edge for boats to go over and water dripping off it so why am i answering questions about a model i don't have and its edge when in reality they're drawing bent lines and claiming geometry inside profile for their edge that they don't have hand wave jedi mind trick right this is not the horizon you are looking for i think he was exactly. trying Thanks to say clearing that up as well so i want you to sit back and no pleasure dude in discord i think he was trying to say because you put the word s behind horizon so you said horizons. He's thinking you were saying there was more than one. Sure, I, I understand no, I point. What I meant was, I think ballers get confused there. No, not confused. Double speaking fundies who've got cognitive dissonance. Somebody's causing a lot of feedback in Discord. Copper. Copper neck. Anyway. Yeah, the yeah. ballers aren't confused. They're in cognitive dissonance. That's why <laughs> Mitchell from Australia, big shout out to you, my friend. That's why he absolutely pummeled that Mr. Sensible dude because he's got to assert blocks, uh, horizons block boats and it's physical and geometric. And then in the next breath, say, we don't see it. You can't ever see it without atmosphere, but it's blocking boats. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So when you have that pointed out to you in a bit of questioning, you're going to be scratching your head and looking around a lot because <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. We've only got one horizon. Their horizon's geometric. Not the one we see. <laughs> We've never seen it. <laughs> Except when it was blocking boats, blocking the Isle of Man, bending yeah. into a sphere at oh, altitude, right. <laughs> running anything through the maths with straight tangents. Then it's physical and real. Then it's blocking stuff. 
However, when you demonstrate that it couldn't possibly be physical or geometric, then we've never seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from these. This is the problem. This is the biggest problem you guys have is that you've had to literally reverse your position 180 degrees and it's noticeable. Okay? You guys never said before for all these years we've been going back and forth you never said that the 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 horizon is apparent never said there was two three horizons or the geometric horizon we've never seen before you never said that so what I, is it about this argument i just said so uh, oh just it's it's been debunked so 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 many times well why do you still not have a response to this <laughs> why maybe maybe they should uh, put their money where their mouth is they should go hire a fictitious surveyor to survey a piece of property. And then when it's time to pay him, they're gonna say, did you mark the boundaries? He says, yeah, I, I, it's there, but you just can't see it. Yeah, it's, it's we can in pay your, you in fictitious money. It's in your definitions. You just read it out as a fictitious entity that's worked its way into the way we see things, even though it's conceptual. Well, it's laying it out in black and white, what the horizon in their model is. It's a single point marked with an X labeled horizon when you see the side of your own head like we do in reality. Oh, my bad. That's not how we experience things. Also, you've got to consider that everything will stay the same size regardless of what distance it is. If it's 10 feet, and when you run a tape measure up it, it's 10 feet at a million miles. And should the line that I'm drawing and replacing perspective with be straight instead of curved, then you've got to justify why you can't see that thing at a thousand miles. Because I can draw a line between the side of your head and it, write a thousand on it, and in my model I can see it, if it's flat. So why can't we? Forget the fact we've ignored perspective. That doesn't matter. Because I'm a moron and don't appreciate how my model has hijacked perspective and called it Earth Curve. So you've got to justify why we can't see things at a million miles on a flat plane. Because I don't deal in perspective. I deal in side-on geometry and actual sizes. Actual sizes is what you must deal with because you must deal in geometry. And the horizon's apparent. And we deal in apparent everything. Don't you forget it. <laughs> really? What do you mean? You've just told us how it's all geometric and we need to deal in feet and inches. So what do you mean now it's got to be dealt with as an apparent something or other? Apparent? There's no apparent in your calculator. What are you talking about? Apparent horizon. Where's that then? I thought we were dealing in actual, geometric, straight lines and actual sizes. Now we're dealing in bent lines and apparent positions. Oh, this doesn't make any sense. How's that going to work in your calculator? Oh, well, I'll tell you. It doesn't! <laughs> <laughs> so, and, hang on, hang on. And, Are these an the honourable mention to that should have been on one of the 25 dumbest quotes. I think, I believe it was Chris MCM who said, uh, the geometric horizon is a straw man. Okay. <laughs> are yeah, we these agree. the same people? Hey, are, are these the same people who take a long trip to visit a mountain to go skiing? And from where they start, the mountain is below the light post. And as they get closer to the mountain, the light posts shrink in comparison to the mountain. Is, are these the same people with that Muppet vision? Yeah. Amazing. These people are morons. We're telling them how they've been swindled and they're fighting with us. It's great. You know, we've appreciated where the swindle works. We've shown you how the swindle works. What they're the equivalent of is a guy in front of the, you know, the, the con artist doing the three-card Monty. And we're standing next to him going, he's conning you. This is how the trick works. Yeah, I'll break it down for you. Here's an ex exact example of how it's done and what they do to swindle you. And they go, screw you, man. I'm going to fight for this dude to swindle me again. <laughs> good, good, keep going. Keep telling us that the horizon's refracted. Because we used to argue about how physical and geometric everything was. How we must ignore the apparent sizes. That's what we were told. Of course, we'd, we're being hand-waved and met Jedi mind-tricked at the moment to try and forget about all that, apparently. Nah, man, it's 2020. It's, it's, a, it's a new year. <laughs> you're, the, you're the black swan chocolate 2020. And it actually did start on January 1st because uh, QE keeps saying January 2nd, but I have a screenshot in my phone of the Modus Tolan's argument on January 1st. So we started off the year with this. <laughs> so 
Is that so? Yep. Is that so? Yep. He's got his dates mixed up. No yep, way. I, con I confirmed that yesterday, yes. So this actually happened January 1st, 2020. Isn't that nice? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was predicted in the 1989 Simpsons broadcast, I believe. There was some predictive programming going on. Go on, fill us in. I'm just making it up. Come on. I'm off, I'm off on a tangent. Here. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's true, because we made it up ourselves. That's it. Yeah, 2020, Year of the Black Swan. And when QE introduced it as your Black Plague, I thought, that's a bit much, isn't it? <laughs> now I think, yeah, it is. It's like the plague. Yep, yep, yep. Notice the absence of ballers coming to the show since the Black Swan. That's cool. They like to respond in echo chambers. So while they're out there criticising me for the way I produce my show, in other words, I keep my guests under control if they try and obfuscate a point that's being made and talk continually, verbal diarrhoea, obviously I've got to control that. Well, they object to it, and when they're objecting to it, typically they're taking out sections, editing them, taking all the time they need to respond to the little section that they've trimmed out, making a video responding to that specific section, maybe having two or three attempts to get the words correct, and then... Moving around the timeline a little bit, drop, drop, chopping this bit, chopping that bit. You know, you can take as long as you like when you're making an edited response. And then they publish it like they're responding to me. While simultaneously criticising how it's done live. How the real men debate. Yeah? Well, that's okay. I can do the exact same thing. I can take their video, take out the little section where they say, Yes, we've got a geometric horizon. And an apparent horizon. And I can put that in a video and go, Hello, Dumbo. We've only got one horizon. It's just not geometric. So, two can play at that game. The thing is, I can do that like them at my leisure. I can take as long as I like over it, put as much or as little effort as, in as I want. It doesn't change the fact that I still have an open door. And anybody right now can walk into this bar, like they frequently do, and go, We've got scientific evidence for gravity. And I can slam it on the table and I have to deal with it there and then. On the fly. Without any prep. Without any time to move those little sliders around or rehearse my response. None of that. But obviously you can be critical of the way the show's run if you don't like the fact that the fundies don't get the opportunity to rumpus the living crap out of a decent response. Then you can criticise that. Doesn't change the fact that we've got a live debate. And anybody can and does join and try and argue their point. And there's been plenty of embarrassing moments for us on the flat earth side of things. We thought we saw Ireland in those pictures, you know? How embarrassing. And you know how it was pointed out that we didn't see Ireland? Because I had the same exact bar with the exact same open door and the fundies came in and they told us they really rubbed it in too. Yeah, can't see Ireland. There's too much physical earth curve obstruction. Here's the geometry that shows you. Right, fundies? Yeah, well, they came into the bar. They made us all look stupid. And now, as it turns out, that whole ordeal was for nothing. They were drawing straight line tangents and doing actual geometry. And yet, talking about how the light was bent. Wow, that was a complete waste of time. Those morons are obviously long gone from the bar now. Not even their dust remains. But they're still recorded. You can still hear those fundies arguing about the physical geometry that they're drawing straight lines to and claiming how much the physical horizon's blocking things in the distance. You can see, still see those times when they strolled into the bar and caused a bit of havoc. What we got now? Birds tweeting. Yeah, you can still hear the old, the old ghosts. Yeah. And we do, we do, we do. Strolling around haunt, ha haunting it. Yeah. <laughs> the old ghosts of the old gunslingers that used to come into the saloon. <laughs> we don't have a geometric horizon. No, we do, we do. I wonder when they were making when they were making fun of us, you know, when you said that it was Ireland we were seeing and they were going so hard. I wonder if they thought that years later they'd be arguing that you've never seen the geometric horizon. I wonder if that was in the cards for them. 
<laughs> Same well, thing. Like, yeah, yeah you're, okay. you're, you're basically saying when it was all happening back in the day, we were saying that's just perspective. No, no, no. That's earth curvature blocking the bottom of boats. That's a geometric horizon. Now, no, it's just perspective. What? <laughs> well, they're saying yeah, exactly. it's apparent. So to just free phrase what Tenth Man's just said, they used to say, no, we don't apply the apparent sizes. We're dealing in physicality and geometry. That's why we're using a geometric calculator for the Earth. It doesn't deal in apparent sizes. We're dealing in how much physicality is blocking the bottom of this Isle of Man. So let's draw a straight line to it in the model and assert how much physicality is blocking it by how many feet. Don't need to know the angular size. We only need to know the feet and inches actual size because it's not dealing in apparent sizes. Fast forward three or four years. Well, obviously we've got an apparent horizon. <laughs> oh, really? We've got apparent, have we? Well, when we were <laughs> arguing about the geometry, you were telling us that we shouldn't use apparent sizes. Now we've got to worry about how everything's apparent. Yeah, we've been saying that for years. Why doesn't he calculate a deal in it then? Somebody trying to say something in Discord. It's funny. How many times did you ask him, why does your calculator not account for perspective? What, what was usually the answer to that, Nathan? It does. Well, no, it doesn't. I think I still <laughs> know some ballers that still claim, yeah, but they do it afterward. <laughs> So that would be in the calculator then, right? <laughs> that would be after. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I think because Walter Bislin's... No, I've heard that. Uh, it, it still would technically... It could apply. It's not going to make any sensible yeah, result, apply. of course. But, but it doesn't that's apply even in, what they claimed back in the day. It doesn't apply. In Walter Bislin's calculator, he's got an angular size calculator that sits alongside the geometric calculations that use feet and inches. It's clear... You can tell it's not using perspective. The feet and inches values are being used. So while he's got... <sighs> Who's making that racket? Dude, what is it? 33 perks? <sighs> it's gatekeeper. Gatekeeper 33. He's taken care of. Thank you. Well, they need to rename it to Perspective Calculator because they are not assigning any geometry to the geometric horizon anymore. They don't have geometry. Black Swan's killed all of their geometry. They don't have an R value anymore. They don't have a physical geometric horizon anymore. We don't see the geometric horizon. And with that, I'm going to say, if you are watching this on the Nathan Oakley 1980 premiering stream, then stay tuned, as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, if you're watching this live on the Nathan Oakley channel, then this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making this live show possible. Again, if you're watching this on Nathan Oakley 1980 and you wanted to watch the Friday show live, then there is a link below to the Nathan Oakley channel, so you can check out the live shows there. There's also uncut and after shows daily on the Nathan Oakley channel. Once again, stay tuned if you're watching on Nathan Oakley 1980, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!